to the phone lines. Uh, we want to talk next to uh, Hal. He's listening in Memphis, Tennessee on WCRV. Hi, Hal. Hey, Hank. How's it going today? Good. How are you? Doing well, thank you. In in Matthew 10.33, um, it's a passage where Jesus says, if any man will uh, acknowledge me before men, I'll acknowledge him. If he disowns me before men, I'll disown him uh, before my Father in heaven. And yet Peter denied uh, Christ three times. Uh, you know, one time he was, the first time was kind of caught him off guard, but the other times he had plenty of time to think about it after he had told him that he would never, uh, he would never leave him. So I just wondered how that's reconciled. Yeah, it's very much in concert with the way I answered a question in the first segment of the broadcast today, which is to say that an unforgivable sin is one in which the sinner never repents. It's a conscious, ongoing, willful rejection of the goodness and grace of God that could be yours. But in the case of Peter, while he committed an act of treason against the Almighty by denying him with vile oaths, even though he had been his close companion and disciple during Christ's earthly sojourn, that was an act but it was not a continuous, willful rejection. What did P- Peter do after he sinned? He recognized his sin, and he wept bitterly. And you see later on that in the same way that he denied uh, Jesus Christ three times, the Lord of glory affirmed him three times by telling him to feed his sheep. Uh, that That's kind of along the lines I was thinking. It's, uh, it struck me that I think a thing that, many Christians hope never happens is that they're put in that kind of a, a situation of torture or confinement um, where they would be put to the test of, of you know, denying them. I think we all hope we would not do that, but uh, I guess I always felt like that was a line that I, I realize it's not the unforgivable sin, but I thought that was a line you shouldn't cross. Uh, well, you know, in you many know. ways we do it every single day. There are ways in which we deny the Lord before men. And uh, that is why we want to constantly ask the Lord to forgive us. But, you know, the other thing about this, you know, I've met so many persecuted Christians who have been tormented or even tortured for their faith in various parts of the world over the last 10 years as I've traveled, particularly through throughout Asia. And and what I find is a constant refrain in in their stories is that God gave them the grace they needed when they needed it, and often not a moment before, which is to say that with our trial, God gives us the grace to be sustained in the midst of this trial. And uh, that's the beauty, and that's one of the reasons God does not blaze the floodlight down the trail of life, but rather it gives us enough light to step in to some more light and if we knew what the future was, we we probably wouldn't want to face it. But but with His grace and goodness, when we need it, we can face the future unfailingly. So it just gives us enough light to step into some more light and gives us the grace with each passing day to be His true disciples. 